Capitalism is dead. We need a new capitalism. We need a new sustainable, fair, and more equitable capitalism. We need a capitalism that values not just shareholders, and of course, I love shareholders, but as important, stakeholders. A capitalism value of stakeholders. Who are your stakeholders? Your customers, your employees, your partners. We have many stakeholders, not just shareholders. Okay, that was Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff on CNBC yesterday. Joining us right now is Bob Davis. He's a partner at Highland Capital. You think capitalism is dead, sir? I think capitalism has a little ways to go. I might, I might, what does that mean? I might count on it for a little bit longer. What does capitalism mean by, uh, unto itself? I think it speaks to free markets and the ability to make informed and conscious decisions about where you're going. And the markets speak for itself. It's an open supply. It's an open demand. And uh, a, a price is settled in on where... Okay, so what are, if, if you're right, then what do we do about all these polls that suggest that millennials, especially, um, and I think even maybe broadly, broader than that, believe that capitalism doesn't work anymore. Well, uh, I'm not we're sure. We're seeing it in debates. We're seeing it. it it's, it's a constant refrain. So if you're right, what, what do you think has to change? Yeah, I'm not sure they believe it doesn't work as much as they like to say it doesn't work. In fact, if you ask some of the millennials, I'm not sure they'll define what capitalism is before they say it doesn't work. But I think the concern that you're finding out of most of these things is that companies are getting uh, immense power, and that's where the concern comes out of. So they're saying not that it doesn't work as an institution, but it's threatening to them as an institution. And so... When, when, when Mark Benioff says that today um, profits are the table stakes, right? right? He actually makes a slightly different argument, by the way, guys, than the business roundtable. He basically says you have to do the profits part. That, that is like the table stakes piece. These other constituent parts um, are necessary, but that's like a secondary layer so it help, to, to it the profit piece. In, it helps sustain <laughs> business and keep paying your employees? Before That's you can do part the of it. Stuff. I mean, it becomes a circular argument. He's no, saying you, know if you don't mean, do those other things. But before you can do any good, you need to make sure you can stay open. You got to stay open, and we've talked Pay about it. The there have been CEOs and... today. Um, you know, I'm thinking of the CEO of eBay, who, you know, actually was was nailing it a lot on the purpose element and some of the the other constituent parts, but wasn't nailing um, some of the and now he's gone the profit numbers, and he's gone. No. And so, how are shareholders? I mean. Yeah, cl cl clearly, at some point, profits are essential. The, the w world that I'm in, rarely, I mean, rarely, if ever, are we backing a company that's profitable from the get-go. Always, the company is driving to its profitability. But my, my businesses are so young, and they're getting off the ground. It's just not realistic to Do think they can make Do you ever listen to any of them thinking they have a purpose? Does that play into anything? Yeah, that, that plays. That, that, the purpose, mission-driven businesses are, are huge. That's a big part of what we think about. So somebody that looks at, they think they're changing the world. We have a company here in New York called Freshly that will sell probably 40 or 50 million meals this year to consumer. I mean, he thinks he's feeding America. He's changing eating habits. He, he's giving convenient, good tasting food. He is a mission driven guy. I mean, all the way. And, and that's powerful because it wraps around not only the management team and the company, but consumers buy into that in a meaningful way, too. So maybe that's the distinction here, that it's this mission driven idea. I mean, is that what's changing, you think? I, I, you know, I think... I mean, do you think it, things were mission-driven in the 80s? It's interesting. So, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I'm not buying in fully to things that are changing all that radically. I think many businesses are mission-driven, for sure. We can look at a lot of examples of that. I mean, I just mentioned Freshly. There's another company, Everly Well, that does home blood testing. I mean, it's, it, that's a mission-driven concept. Take things like Quest Diagnostics that yeah. were cumbersome and old. And I mean, things do repeat. Let's do it at home. But that, that, that just, that just in back In the again. 60s, we had a whole... And I remember, well, you were around, but, but there were millennials. They, they're the same as they are today. And I, I, I mean, I saw Peter Fonda died, and I saw Easy Rider again. And I watched, they went to a commune. It could be this, you could just tra transplant the same people that I see today into there. They were doing Tai Chi, and they were talking about certain <laughs> things in their life. that they, right. It was identical. They grew all, all up and became, I don't know, 60-year-olds, right. the same people. And there's a whole new crop that will grow up eventually. I wouldn't be taking a lot of advice on, on too many life subjects from millennial polls. I just, I my, early, my, early career, my early career was I was in technology companies. Now, right. you look all but this was in the days when computers really didn't exist for the most part. Small businesses, individuals, surely didn't have them. PC didn't have them. No phones. Yeah, no, no, no phones for sure. And we changed. And we were selling those. But did we feel mission-driven? Oh, you bet we felt mission-driven. We were changing the world. It was computers. It was right. exciting. We were informed the world, releasing data to the mass population. I mean, it was mission-driven in a big, big way. It wasn't a consumer brand in the traditional sense, the way we think that uh, Harry's and for shaving is a mission-driven brand, but, but at least the founders think they are. But it was just, it's, it was, I think, very similar to what we find out there today. Bob, we got to leave the conversation there. Thank you. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Good to see you.